In this video, we're going to take a look at how to name aldehydes and ketones, two more homologous series of organic compounds. So let's start off with aldehydes. If you remember, aldehydes have a functional group that is a carbonyl. So it looks like this. And so its general name is it'll take the name of the alkane, it'll drop the E ending, and add AL to its end instead. So it's an alkanal. Um, the carbon on the C double bond OH group, or sometimes we write it condensed as CHO, is numbered as carbon 1. And it's always carbon 1. And we do not need to indicate that in our name. So we do not need to include it. And that's because it's always carbon 1, so it's a bit redundant to put it into the name. General formula is CnH2n. O, um, which is the same general formula as ketones. So that's kind of a cool thing that they have in common. Now ketones, on the other hand, they look fairly similar to aldehydes, except they have an alkyl group on either side of the carbonyl functional group. So their name is the alkane with the E ending dropped, then an X to indicate what number the carbonyl is sitting at, and then own as the ending. So it's an alkan X own. Um, the numbering is chosen to give priority to the carbonyl group, so it has the lowest possible number. And just an interesting kind of fact is that there's no number needed for propanone because the carbonyl has to be in the middle of the two other carbons. Um, so again, can create redundancy if you did include the number there. So let's work through a few examples to do some naming of aldehydes and ketones. Okay, our first example here, and I think the best thing to do is to first identify your functional group. So we've got a C double bonded O to an H here at the end of our molecule. And that's key to identify that this is an aldehyde. Now this carbon is included in the main chain and we're just gonna go across here. So we have one, two, three, four carbons included here, which makes this a butan and then a L. So it's a butan L. Now you can also do a condensed sort of uh, form of this formula. So I'm just gonna write it out. We got CH3, CH2, CH2, and then aldehydes are written as CHO. Um, and that's because we don't want to confuse it. If we wrote COH, it would look like an alcohol. So we don't want to use that. And we use CHO instead. And um, just know that you might come across structures that are written this way. And that also is an aldehyde. Okay, example two then. Um, again, We've got an aldehyde because we're ending in the C double bond O with an H. And that's your key indicator that this is an aldehyde. This carbon has to be part of the main chain. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. And then we can go either way. So I'm just going to go straight to make it five. And in terms of numbering, that aldehyde's always one. So I'm going to number them one through five going left to right, which means that we have a methyl group here on carbon four. And so its name is going to be 4-methyl and then pentan-al. So 4-methyl-pentan-al. Okay, our next example. Um, this one we're going to identify with our carbonyl group here but we don't have a hydrogen now on the end, so that means that this is a ketone. And we need to identify the longest chain that contains that carbonyl. So we got one, two, three, four, five here. Now we do need to number this because we need to know where that carbonyl appears. So we're gonna number right to left in this case, giving the carbonyl the lowest possible number. And so that appears at number two. Because we have a five carbon chain, this is penten, and then two, and then own. Okay. Um, now you might see this in condensed structure too, and this is kind of interesting, is what we would have CH3, CH2, CH2, 
And then this carbonyl can be written as just CO and then CH3. Uh, so you might see it come up like that in textbooks because this is kind of easier to type than this is to draw. And so it makes sense to have this sort of version of uh, condensed structures that we can use. One last example then. Again, uh, we are recognizing here that we have a C double bond O and there isn't a hydrogen attached to it. So that means it's a ketone. We're going to find our largest, longest chain containing it. One, two, three, four. We don't want to go up because that would only make it five. So we got five and six. Okay. And then we want to number it and we want to prioritize the carbonium. So we're going to number it from left to right. And that means we have a methyl group F4. So we're going to call this 4-methyl. And then it's a hexane. So hexane. And then 2 own. Okay. So that's how you name aldehydes and ketones, as well as some really great examples of how to name them. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.